Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. We are coming up on the I, I wish I can have I wish I could tell you I have such a a great idea of how to open up this video but and or the podcast when you hear it. But I don't think I've ever been more concerned or worried about a potential assassination or, or some kind of attempt uh that has happened in this country before with Reagan and of course the uh JFK and it's just my heart is, is hurting right now because our country is so divided and our American church is so divided. And a lot of it is race. A lot of it is based on, on political idolatry. And we have been consumed by a bombardment of propaganda and hate speech and uh, and and, and th things that, th that threatened our democracy so much panic and anxiety and stress and my heart grieves for this country but more importantly it grieves for every single one of us a human being living in this country american citizens and i i think i wouldn't i think it's fair to say that if we look at just not just look at at home and look at america if i bet you if i if, if we look outside the country other world leaders in other countries are looking to us with the same amount of anxiousness of wanting to see what happens tomorrow. I don't think I've ever experienced this type of anticipation and, and, and anxiety for because I don't want to see this country harmed any more than it's going to happen. The division in our, in our country, it was just a matter of time because... And to blame President Trump for all that's going on is foolishness. All it takes is somebody to drop a match, but whoever's now throwing gasoline on the fire were guilty of it. Did he have a huge hand and part to play? Absolutely. Words carry consequences. You know it and I know it. But it, those words, do, it won't reach anyone if they didn't have that sinful nature in them in the first place. We are sinners. We are we we tend to go into situations with with our own expectations and our own desires wanting to be met. The Bible tells us all day long. What is it with the wars with you? Let's go ahead and read. Let's not. Let's not mix words here and let's not let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted. Let's go to James because I think it's necessary that we look at. And this it boils down to the same thing. It always boils down to the same thing. What is this is James chapter four. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is it not the source that is not the source, your pleasures that wage war in your num in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. There are many Christians in this country that pray to God. And I know I am not alone in thinking this, that God would see want to see someone hurt. One of our presidents harmed. I am sure right now, sick Twisted individuals are hoping and praying that God will arm them so they could be strong to go out and attack and harm an American citizen on a political ide ideology. My God, sin is running rampant and the devil is laughing at us. Now, I am not here to add to that, 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 that pile on. You got the media to do that enough for you. You got the media already running President Biden into the dirt. He's he's old and he can't do that. And and Trump did this. It's already started. 
there's not even been a new president sworn in yet, and the pundits are already attacking and, 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 and calling foul, and nothing has happened yet. This is the nature of human sin. This is what it does. Let's go ahead and go to Galatians. Got to go to Galatians when we're discussing fruit of the flesh and fruit of the spirit. Now, and, and tell me, is this not what we're dealing with as Christians day in and day out? Listen to this. Works of the flesh, uh, Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to be reading from the CSB. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. It's not even a secret. It's obvious. It is obvious. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy. We ain't got to go much further. Factions. Factions. I'm bipartisan. I, I, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm an independent. I'm a progressive. No, you're a sinner. And you participate in idolatry. That's what you are. You need to repent and turn from the works of the flesh. Look at look at the rest of the look at that. Outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions. Envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. Any th Brothers and sisters, we don't have the time to play games. You don't have time to be a Republican. You don't have time to be a Democrat. You don't have time to participate in politics. You, have, you barely have time to even deal in your families. You have a gospel that you must learn. You have a new creation. You are a new creature. You have a new nature to nurture. You have no time other than to carry your cross and practice your righteousness. You got no time to do the things that we saw last Wednesday with the, the assault on our capital. And it's just going to get worse as long as men and women like me and you want to hang on to our political causes when the only cause we can hang on to is Christ. That's it. There is nothing else. There's nothing else to hang on to. It is just Christ and Christ alone. That's all you have time for. You have no time for anything else. You go to work. You come home. You get in your Bible. You get your children in the Bible. And you stay there until your new nature starts to grow. You got no time for nothing else. You got no time for nothing else. Nothing. Nothing at all. So let's go into our Bibles and let's get to what has to what has to be done? What has to be done is prayer. And the Bible tells us, and we are commanded to pray. Listen to this. We're gonna go through this. This this, this is a this we're gonna do a fire. It's gonna fire these off so we can just get an understanding of what we need to be doing. First Timothy chapter two, verse one and two. I urge then first of all that petitions and prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings and all those in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. We got no time to be hating anybody but our sin and the devil and his eve and the evil darkness that's coming for our kids and our families and each other. First Peter 2 17 show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers, fear God and honor the emperor. Romans 13, 1, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which is God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Let me leave it right there and let you understand, brothers and sisters, if you are in politics, if you have taken sides for or against whatever administration that you have right now, you are working against God. Yes, that's right. And you will be guilty for working against God. And if you are a godly professor, if you are a Christ centered, born again, blood washed Christian, you got no business working against God. None. 
if the idea that you think you can work against God and God's going to bless your life, you are as foolish as those protesters that tried to tear down our democracy. That democracy was built and established by God. And yes, sinners have ran it into the ground, but it is not so run into the ground that we can't get the ship afloat for a few more years before all nations are destroyed and brought low when Christ returns. And that is a glorious day for every family of believer. That's what we look for. That's what we pray for. That's why we grow our new nature. The Holy Spirit had asked me, and it always comes in the form of a question. Why do we do what we do as Christians? Why do we try to grow our new nature? Why do we keep repenting of our, our sins and admit our flaws and, and try to overcome them by, by being purposeful and, and, and intentful to make sure we spend time in the word of the Lord? We spend time in prayer. We spend time with our brothers and sisters. We spend time with our loved ones. We spend time with those that we love. We spend time with them so that people can understand why God is good. If they look at a Christian life and they see the only reflection they see is a life that looks like theirs. Ours just happen to have a Bible on, on, on the coffee table when everybody else has country living. Throw the Bible away, brother. Throw it away, sister. It's just ornament. It doesn't do you any good. If there's no separation they see with us, if they don't look at us and they don't see a separation, we failed. This country has the biggest failure population of them all and is the Christian body. We have failed to unite this country. We have chosen sides against God and now is a time to repent. Now is a time to repent. There's no Democrats or Republicans in the body of Christ. There's not a one of them. Now I'm going to say it all day long. You can be a Christian and love all both parties. You can love every party out there. But disciples and followers of Christ, we have no party that we, we, we love. We have no partisan politic in our life. We have no favoritism about where we want to see one thing or another. We have one rule and one rule only that we live by. And that's what is that? We are to serve the true and living God. And we do that until the day we expire. And our souls go to heaven. And then when Christ comes, if we're here when Christ returns, then our, our bodies of our soul and our, and, and our flesh will be perfected. And then we will be a whole being just like Christ. We'll be just as glorious as Christ. Not equal, but just as glorious. But until that day happens... We don't have time to pick and choose politics. We don't have time to pick and choose who we think is a better candidate for this. Our candidate has already been elected. Our candidate has already, has already been on the throne. Our candidate can never be voted out of office. Our candidate doesn't even have a possibility of being voted out of office. Our king sits on the throne forever and ever. Amen. Our king sits in heaven right now waiting on us, preparing a mansion for each one of us, me and you, brothers and sisters. He is waiting for our, us to get there. And the day that Christ gets off that throne and rises up and comes down and rescues all of us, we are going to, for the first time, understand what it is to be at peace. We will finally be in the bosom of the sun. There'll still be work to do. But we'll have bodies that don't feel pain and, and a heart that doesn't feel anguish and sadness and, and hurt and, and loss. And we will have a that is what we look forward to. How do you have time to be voting and looking for political agendas when you don't even know what the gospel says? When's the last time you presented the gospel to your children, to yourself? We got no time. Time is running out all the time. The sand is pouring out. We have no time. We got no time. The Bible commands us to respect our authorities. The Bible commands us to pray for those in authority, for they've been established by God. I don't... I was be the first one to say that I, I was a Trump supporter. Then I turned and just turned against all politics. And then I just I went off the rails, angry at, at all of my brothers and sisters who are still doing it. Never realizing I didn't give them the grace that was given to me by my own brothers and sisters that came for me and said, Eric, you can't pick sides like that, man. You, you're causing people to stumble. 
I didn't give that grace out. So I'm here to repent and tell you I was wrong and talking so much mad noise against Trump or for Trump and talking noise against I'm wrong. And this is all of us, man. We we are guilty. This tongue is vicious. Vicious. The only thing that can constrain it is the Lord Jesus himself. And as long as we continue to keep living in this world, thinking that this world has something to offer, we will fail. Believers in Christ are not patriots. We are pilgrims. We are passing through. We are here for a finite amount of time. And in that time, we have specific parameters and a specific goal that we do. And that goal has always been the same. Make disciples of all the nations. We got no time making enemies of nations. We got only one job. And that's to glorify God in our actions by spreading the gospel and living a life worthy of the call that we've been given. We got no time for nothing else. So I'm asking you to unify, pray, spread this message around. Pray. I need your prayers. This nation needs your prayers. This world needs your prayers. There are people hurting and struggling that need your prayers. And now is the time to stand up. Now is the time to unify under the Lord and stand tall by getting on your knees and praying for peace of our new leadership coming in and the leadership going out. We don't want nothing bad to happen to Trump. We want mercy and grace to be given to him just as equally has been given to us, just like we it's equally been given to the new president. We got to pray and repent because we are not out the woods by any means. Don't you ever think we out the woods. It is just beginning. The tide has turned. The devil, the worm has turned. The dragon has been breathing fire for four years now. And it's just getting hot. Pray for our new president. Pray for our old passing president. Pray for everyone in office. I don't care if it's from Kamala Harris down to Kevin Jones, who's the president of the PTA. Pray for those in authority, your Walmart managers, your convenience store managers, your CVS managers, your cha- it doesn't matter. Pray and pray for each other not to keep falling into sin to where we can be a benefit to this country and this world. Besides the burden that we have become to this world, because we have turned the gospel of Christ into a political message. And we will reap what we sowed. I love you very much. Let's pray for let's pray for our presidents. Let's pray for those in authority. Let's pray for those men and women in law enforcement. Let's pray for the men and women that are going there to see the president inaugurated. Let's just pray for safety. Let's pray for the hatred in the men's hearts that are out there that they can come to reason that this country is in dire need of help. There's a pandemic that exposed the weakness of the human soul and it says one thing we have failed, but we don't have to fail in this one area of prayer. There's one thing we all can share is that we all pray to the true and living God. I love you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.